right? This is, a, this is a distinction that matters. So equal protection under the law means that you and I, we both get arrested for a crime, we have to be treated equally, right? If you're black and I'm white, we have to be treated, that's what equal protection under the laws means. It doesn't mean that if you're a kleptomaniac and I'm not, and we have a law against theft, that now we have to treat you differently because you're a kleptomaniac, right? The same is true with regard to marriage. So the law on marriage was that a man can marry a woman and a woman can marry a man. That does not say the right. same, that, 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 that's a behavior. So that's, that's, it's a behavior, it's not an identity question. That's where my question comes sure. in, which is that uh, if you believe that's true, how, do you, how exactly do you justify the Supreme Court ruling in 1967 with Loving, with loving, v, sure. loving v. Virginia? Because mm -hmm. couldn't you just make the argument? I mean, I haven't really found a, a lot of, I, I'd say I've, I've tried to find things, and even the National Review seems to say that you know, on, I'm not saying you're an originalist, but... I am on, an originalist, but yes. Oh, you are an originalist? Oh, sure. it's, Ethan National Review seems to concede that on originalism, it's pretty hard to justify Loving v. Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, how exactly, would you have supported Loving v. Virginia at the time? Yes, because it makes a distinction in law between races, and race is not a, and race is not a behavior. So Even anytime if, there's a distinction in law between races, that's unconstitutional under the 14th Amendment. That's but, Clarence Thomas' position, it's mine too. But even, even though the people who framed the 14th Amendment didn't actually, I mean... Well, that's not true. They, I mean, read, read the history of the Reconstructionist Republicans who actually wrote the 14th Amendment, and the truth is they actually opposed segregation. There were significant attempts to desegregate in the aftermath of the Civil War by the radical Republicans, and that was stopped, really, by the corrupt bargain in 1876, right, when they decided to pull all the troops out of the South, and then they decided to give the presidency to, okay. to a Republican in, in return. So that, that would be your defense on our... On our sure, Plessy versus Ferguson was wrongly decided, too. Right, segregation between races... On the, on the basis of, of race, that, that Plessy versus Ferguson was wrongly decided. Okay, thanks so, for that clarification. Sure. Yeah, I just want to see that. So I wanted to address both elements, I think, of the alt-right that has both tweeted you and I, Ovens. I typically respond with a picture of one of my Smith & Wessons. <laughs> but my perspective is I think in some ways they do have some legitimate grievances and they've been driven to this extreme. Mm -hmm. Like your now rival uh, Yiannopoulos talks about, you know, these young men are masturbating to anime, etc. But I think a lot of that is because for a long time they've been told, since they started going to school, that everything was their fault due to the fact that they right. were white males. Right. Um, and so I kind of, to, I guess, borrow from Chiang Kai-shek, I sort of see them as a cancer of the skin. And I think there's something that's more of a long-term threat that's sort of a cancer of the heart, if you mm -hmm. would, um, in conservative politics. I've noticed that um, among certain elements that have come out of the Ron Paul movement, mm -hmm. right? that they've started to get more and more involved in traditional uh, sort of conservative, you know, died in the wool conservative organizations, mm -hmm. and they'll help each other despite the fact I've encountered ones that have talked about literally people working, being hired by these or some organizations behind closed doors talking about Judeo-Bolshevism. Or right. in many cases, I've been like, because I was in the Navy for six years, I've been called a baby killer by, again, people who are associated with these organizations. Mm -hmm. So it's like this, I'm very concerned that in the long term, that we're going to see these folks leapfrogging. Right, so, so two things. One, you know, as far as the alt-right, my problem, again, is not with the diagnosis, which is that the political correctness and the attacks on white people as such is wrong. I agree, that's all wrong. My, my, di my, my problem is the treatment. You know, the, the, Milo and I agree that the, that the attack on white people, qua white people, is really destro destroying any possibility of having honest conversation. His solution is to say white people should defend themselves as white people. My solution is to say that racism is wrong. Right, so that's, my, that's you know, my, my view just generally, and that's where we part ways. Also, he's a coward. But aside from that, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, aside from that uh, you know, as, far as, as far as the idea of kind of the Rand Paul movement starting to infiltrate all these other movements, um, I, think that there is, I think there's truth to that. I haven't seen the stuff that you're talking about particularly, but I think that Rand Paul's brand of Pat Buchananite isolationism uh, is, is really troublesome, and I think that there is certainly an anti-Semitic element of... of Rand Paul, right? I mean, the Rand Paul makes Zionism one of his biggest problems with America, right? He wrote a book where he goes A to Z, what are the biggest problems with America, and Z is for Zionism. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there, there are a lot of dangerous people in the right, um, but, it's, but this is one of the problems I see with Trump, is sort of the, the tutting of them, right? I mean, the truth is, that, like, bringing the, his, his unwillingness to condemn nefarious forces within his own movement is, is one of the most troubling things about Trump to me. If I could just say something more, like my view on the people that tweet ovens, et cetera, I think if, you know, yourself, Podhoritz, et cetera, mm -hmm. if you ignore them, I suspect that to a certain degree they'll go away. The ones who are actually trolls and aren't yeah. Ramsey Paul say. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's, that's probably true, that some of them will, will go away. The reason that I highlight them is because, and I retweet them, and I make a point of doing so, 
right? The reason that I do that is because I want the mainstream conservative movement to know that there are these people out there and that they are being tacitly embraced by the Republican front runner right now. I think that is important. That's the only reason. Because otherwise, look, these people are losers. They're never going to do anything with their lives. If they do do something with their lives, it'll be long after they've buried all this stuff and tried to delete their tweets. <laughs> right, so. Okay, one more question here and then one more question there. Okay. Sorry if you're in line. Don't worry, I'll <laughs> stick around afterward and you can ask a couple questions. Okay, I have two very brief questions if I could be allowed. Sure. Uh, question one, if somebody had in their possession something they described as a brilliantly drafted, uh, eminently marketable one-page document called the California Simple School Choice Initiative, would you have any interest in taking a peek at that document? It depends if that document is self-described thusly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd have to look at it to figure yeah, that out. Yeah, you, you can okay. send it to me. I'll be happy to Okay, take well, it's right here. Okay. 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 <laughs> well, that backfired dramatically. Okay. <laughs> Qu question two, would it be okay if I included in the envelope a three-page essay explaining why Donald Trump fully deserves to be labeled an extortionist? Um, you can include it. I can't guarantee I'll read it. And if, as long as it's not followed by a question three in which you say you have a 3,000-page manifesto, no, 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 you'll no, be sending no. to me shortly. No, no, it, it, there's yeah, four. I appreciate it. That's fine. Can I give it to you? Yeah, you can put it right here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, it's over, dude. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm sorry I don't have any merchandise to offer you, but thank you for coming out here. I had do you have money? I mean, we can do that, too. <laughs> I had a kind of simple question. It was earlier we talked about how the economic policies on the left have not helped minority communities yes. over the last 50 years. So what is the problem with Republicans? Is it a messaging problem that they're not getting forward, that they're not getting through to minority communities, that they're... Is it the media pushing the narrative that Republicans are racist? How can Republicans attract minority voters that may very well be better off? I mean, I think that, policies? yes, I mean, I think that I think there are a couple of problems. I think problem, problem one is that, you know, you do have to overcome the fact that people who are dependent on, a, on government are going to continue to maintain the importance of the government they're dependent on. So there's a little bit of a, of a catch-22. You can't put businesses in an area that's unsafe and where no one's going to shop. But if you don't put businesses in those areas, nobody works for those businesses, and then they're not dependent on the capitalist system, they're dependent on welfare. And you're asking those people to give up the check that they actually get for a check that they're not receiving. And so it's very, very difficult to do that, which is why the best Republican policy would be to run on law and order. Right? This is what happens every time a Republican wins in a blue area. It's Giuliani in New York on crime. It's Richard Reardon on crime in LA. Right? You want to win in a blue area, you run on crime. And then you say to people in the inner city, the reason that, you're, that you can't get a job is because the crime in your area is too much and we need to put more cops in your community, not less. We need to make it safe for businesses to invest in your community and we need to make it safe for your kids to go to school. Let's start there. Right? That would be, that'd be the, the number one solution. The number two solution is we have to stop... The, 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 I'm, I'm tired of Republicans conceding points to people just because they're afraid of making the point. They're afraid they're going to alienate. And in this category, I put Rand Paul. So Rand, in the aftermath of, of what happened in Ferguson, he came out and he said, this just demonstrates that black people really are put upon by the law enforcement community. There's no more damaging myth to the black community than the idea they need less law enforcement. Okay, it's, it's really damaging. What really needs to happen is people need to go into black communities that are, that are, that are underserved. And when I say underserved, what I, I don't mean government underserved. They're government overserved. When I say underserved, I mean underserved by truth. When they need to go into black communities that are wholly democratic, and not only say, look who ruined your community, which is true, but also say to them, look, your life is your own. You want to make a success of yourself? Here is my phone number. Here is my email address. I will help you find a job. I will help you get out of here. I will help you make something better of your life. Right? We actually have to offer them help. And the help doesn't come from government. It comes from people who are actually willing to help. And if we do that, then I think that people are going to, to respond to that in a positive way. And, fi and the final thing is that we have to not let Democrats get away with this nonsense that we don't care about black people. We have to actually say, no, it's Democrats who clearly don't care about black people, which is why they don't give a crap when black people shoot each other in Chicago in massive numbers, and they don't give a crap when people live in South LA in absolute abject poverty, so long as they keep getting elected, because they're a bunch of scurrilous politicians who only care about their own paycheck. Thank you. Okay, I think... Okay, well, uh, all right, one more. <laughs> yeah, I'm 60, I've been here two days, I got neuropathy and these late feet here that hurt me, so I'm gonna ask this question here. Thank <laughs> you for chewing that up, because that's exactly what I speak about with the real Democratic Party. I do a speak on that, whatever. I'm trying to get to the black community. I've been a Republican for over 
20 years now, when I did my research and see what LBJ and that Democrats had done to mm -hmm. black people, whatever, we should have never been Democrats initially, should have been Republicans. But this is my question. I know Donald Trump is not a Republican and not a Democrat. He's an opportunist. Okay? Right. I can see that. Some reason other people cannot. Now, my question is with all you guys that are really good speakers, really good talkers, there are 325 million people plus here in the United States. Right. I cannot believe that you can't find one person in all those that can really start with we need a new unity ticket party. Yeah. He stole the Republican Party. He hijacked. That really pisses me off because the black they've helped black people over the years since the Lincoln administration, okay? And black people don't know that. So my thing is you but if you let this go and people think this okay in four years, you lost one Supreme Court just read Clarence Thompson may be retiring. Ginberg is drunk. She's on her way out. You got one more. <laughs> you may lose four. So if you put three or four more in there, it's not a joke, guys. I'm looking at you may lose everything you've gained in the right. last hundred years because of that. So who can we go to? Got to be one to all you to put your heads together. I'm sick of you guys just talking. I come to all these events and nobody has solutions. Who is that one person that you could put up that got the infrastructure behind them because you had a 17 candidates? Right. Infrastructure is always in place. Right. But we need a new candidate. There's millions of people that don't want to vote for this one or this one, but we'll vote for that third one. So yeah. who can you put up and what are you going to do about it to get that started? Well, Instead of just talking. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm only 32. I know. So I'm, I'm not eligible. <laughs> um, but, you know, the, as far as, as, far as a, a third party candidate coming along, uh, the, there's been a lot of talk of it. I don't think it's going to happen, unfortunately. I don't. I mean, I'm, I'm being honest with you. I wish it would, right? I mean, when, when, even when David French was talking about it, I was saying, fine, do it. You know, if there is, you know, it's, I, as far as the Supreme Court point, I think that in the end, our freedoms are going to be guarded by states like Texas. I think there, there's, there's going to be significant conflict coming between the federal government and the state governments uh, pretty quickly. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I don't know who that's going to be in four years. I'm, uh, you know, I, I wish I could offer one guy who I, I think there. I think there are plenty of good people. Listen, I think there are plenty of good people this time, and we picked the worst one. You right. know, it's, it, it's, it, but I think there are plenty of good people on the horizon. I think Tom Cotton from Arkansas is on the horizon. Um, I think that there are a couple of governors who are who are pretty good who are on the horizon. Um, but I don't think that any leader is going to be a panacea. I don't think that we're, I don't think there's anybody who's going to come in and, and be utopian. I don't think that that person exists. So I think that in the end, it's going to be up to us to make, this is what, what Milton Friedman once said, and I think I'll, I'll finish with this, is that there, instead of us trying to constantly worry about electing the right people, let's exert enough pressure that we make the wrong people do the right things. And, and a lot of that is about activism and applying pressure in the right places and a lot of it is about signaling that we will resist tyranny from the from the government on a government level uh, and at the local level um, but yeah i mean it's, it's a dark period it's a dark period and, and I, I wish i had better answers for you you should run i mean you're great yeah i've heard that i may have to write my own name in <laughs> but really consider it <laughs> thanks so much well thank you all i'll be happy to stick around take some photos with people and answer questions thanks a lot